hand stitched social media icons. You can use them for all sorts of things. I'm just going to create some social media icons because it seems like everybody these days needs a great little set of social media icons. We're going to create the Twitter icon and I'm going to quickly show you how you can adapt it for the Facebook and Google Plus. However, there's a billion other social media applications for this, all kinds of different icons and colors and things like that that you may need. So you're going to see how easy it is to create one and then change it for a million other uses. So I'm going to start here with a brand new document and let me just zoom out so I can see what I'm working on and bring back the interface here for Photoshop. And I basically just have dropped in a background here and the three colors for Facebook, Twitter, and Google Plus respectively. And I'll, I'll show you the numbers for those uh, colors as we progress through the tutorial. So essentially this document is 1280 by 720 and that's all you need. So what we're going to do is we're going to get started by grabbing the ellipse tool located right here underneath the rectangle tool, ellipse tool. And we need to do a couple things here. We're going to set it to draw a shape or a shape layer if you're using an older version of Photoshop. Uh, there's just going to be three little icons up here. You want the icon to the far left. But here in Photoshop CS6, we choose to draw a shape. We're going to set the fill to black. So I'm going to choose black and don't worry about the stroke, we don't need that. Width or height, you now have the option in Photoshop CS6 to punch in a width or height. We're not gonna do that just for the sake of the people using an older version of Photoshop. And everything else can remain the same. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna hold down our shift key and we're gonna draw out a circle about that size, drop it right into the center of our document. I'm actually gonna zoom in just a touch here. And I'm gonna grab my move tool and I want to move it to the middle of the document. So the quick way to align this is just make sure you have the move tool selected. Hit Command or Control A to select all. It's going to select the entire canvas. And then up here in the control panel, align to the center and to the center. So vertical and horizontal centers. And then Command or Control D to deselect. Now what we're going to do is we're going to fill this layer with the Twitter blue or the my closest adaptation of a Twitter blue. So I'm going to double click on the layer thumbnail for this and up comes our color picker. And when we hover our mouse outside of the color picker, we can just click on that color and grab it. And that is 81BEE9. Hit OK. Now what we're gonna do is apply a couple layer styles to this. This is pretty easy. We're gonna go layer, layer style, and we're gonna start with the drop shadow. So what I wanna do here is, well, I'm gonna drag my layer style panel into screen here so you can see what I'm doing. And we're going to leave the blend modes at the multiply and the color black. We're gonna reduce the opacity here to, let's go with 30%, deselect use global light and set the angle to 90 degrees. Now, I'm gonna change the distance to two and I'm gonna leave the size at three. So distance of two, size of three, great. That's our drop shadow. It's a this subtle yet noticeable drop shadow. The next thing we're gonna do is apply an inner shadow. Now, when you think inner shadow, you think shadow and you the first thing that comes to mind is black. However, we want to make this more of a, a, a highlighted edge. So we're going to change the blend mode to, let's go with normal and see what that looks like, and set the color picker to give us white. And we're going to reduce the opacity to 40. We're going to deselect use global light, and we're going to set the angle to 90 degrees as well. Distance of 2, and let's go with a size of 0. The size is essentially just the blur applied to our um, our little highlight there. So we don't want any blur. We want to be a nice, sharp, crisp highlight. The next thing we want to do is apply a bevel and emboss. And this is going to give us this kind of funky effect with the default settings. But we're essentially going to use it to just apply a sort of subtle bent highlight. It's, it's hard to describe, but just follow me here and you'll see exactly what it's going to do. We're going to knock the depth up to 200%. Okay, we're going to leave the direction set to up. We're going to change the size here to, let's go with 7, and set the softness to about double that, maybe a little over double. Let's go 16 pixels, so it's nice and subtle. You can see we're still getting this big, pillowy, soft shadow. We're going to get rid of that in a second. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is change our angle just a little bit. We're going to set it to 128 uh, by an altitude of, let's go with 32. So just tweak them subtly. And I've got these numbers written down. I played with it and kind of perfected it before I started recording. So I don't just know these sort of on the top of my head. Um, and the next thing we're going to do is down here in the highlight and shadow mode, we're just going to reduce the opacity of shadow mode to zero. So completely get rid of that shadow. We're going to set the highlight mode. And let me move this further on the screen so you can see what's happening. Set the highlight mode to overlay. And let's set the opacity, I don't know, we'll just knock it down a little bit, maybe put it around 30. So you can see it's just going to give us this like a kiss of a highlight right across that top corner, if you will, of our ellipse. Go ahead and hit OK to commit those changes. 
And the next thing we want to do is create a little pattern that is going to overlay this colored shape, which is going to give us sort of a fabric look. It's just going to add an additional element of realism because you're going to be able to see the little stitching running around it. Well, what does stitching normally go into? Well, that's right, fabric. So let's try to make this look a little bit like fabric. It's just going to push this effect over the top. So we're going to do that by creating a pattern. Let's go File, New. We're going to create a brand new document here. I'm just going to call this pattern and the width is going to be four pixels and the height is going to be four pixels just a simple four by four pattern it's going to be a piece of cake to create this just follow me here for a second so we're going to hit okay and it's going to open this tiny little document a little tip or hotkey to blow this guy up to to be as big as it's going to get is just command or control zero it's going to just zoom that all the way in so that's great now i believe 3200 is new to photoshop cs6 if you're using anything older than cs6 i believe the uh, max you could zoom in was 1600. Don't worry about it if this looks a little bit smaller. That's all I'm trying to say. Now we're going to double click on the background layer, double click. It's going to say, hey, new layer. Yep, okay, good. And what we're going to do with this guy is we're actually going to get rid of it. So create a new layer by going layer, new layer. Well, if I can get this, there we go. Layer, new layer. And yep, okay, that's fine. And then we're going to grab this guy and drag him to the trash can. The reason I'm doing it that way is just I want a transparent layer. You could select all on the other layer and delete it, but that's just a little easier uh, to explain, that is. So what we're going to do now, now that we have this transparent layer, and it's important that we have a transparent layer because we only want the pattern to be what we're about to draw. Go ahead and grab the pencil tool. So you're going to click and hold on the brush tool, and out pops the tooltip. Grab the pencil tool, and we're going to hit the letter D. Note my foreground and background color here. When I hit the letter D, it reverts them to the defaults, black and white. We're going to start with black. We're going to draw two little squares with the pencil tool. And by the way, you want the pencil tool set to a size of one pixel. I'm going to click one black dot in the top corner, and then I'm going to think. Remember, this is only four pixels across. We have one, two, three pixels. I'm going to go to the third pixel spot. So I've got one, two, three, and that'd be the fourth. So third, and then I'm going to drop down one. There we go. So I've got a one pixel gutter between my two black dots, as well as just you know one click down. All right, so there are two black dots. We're going to hit the letter X, which is going to flip our foreground and background color. Now white is the foreground color. And we're going to place two white dots directly beneath the black one. So bam, one white and one white. There we go. That's our pattern. It's that simple. Now what we need to do is go edit, define pattern, and we're going to name this guy fabric underscore one if I can spell fabric correctly. There we go, fabric underscore one. Hit OK, and we can close this. We're done with this document. You don't need to save it. Don't even worry about it. We're done with it. We never need to see it again. Now that we're back in the other document, what we're going to do is make sure our shape layer is selected, and we're going to go layer, layer style, pattern overlay. So now that we've got that, all we need to do is choose the pattern that we just created. So I'm going to hit my little drop down, and it's the last pattern here in the little set of pattern thumbnails. So go ahead and select that, and you can see we've got this funky little ridged effect going on. Um, what we need to do is just make a couple little subtle changes. First and foremost, change the blend mode to soft light. That's going to sort of make it a much more subtle effect right off, uh, right off the bat. And what we want to do now is reduce the opacity to something around 50%, maybe 50, maybe 45. I'm going to stick with 50 in this case. Now, I'm going to hit OK. And just bear in mind that I am zoomed out to two-thirds size, so I'm going to zoom into 100%. And we can see that you can definitely see that kind of ridging there on the fabric, which is what I want. I don't want it to be too pronounced, but I also don't want it to be uh, too subtle either. So just find kind of that sweet spot, something that looks good to you. Now that we want to do is, uh, now what we want to do, excuse me, is apply the ring of stitching around this. This is kind of cool. This is a little effect that I don't really use very much in Photoshop or a feature of Photoshop I don't use very much, but it's been around for a little while. Grab your text tool and choose just a, a very simple plain font, something that uh, isn't too ornate. So I'm just going to go with the Arial and I'm going to set it to regular and a very small size. I'm going with eight points. And then this is kind of important. Here in the anti-aliasing, go with strong. Sharp, crisp, and smooth are just going to, and, and none, they're all not really going to be what we want with a, a, a typeface that's this small. So we're going to go with strong. And by the way, you can choose a, a bit font if you want something that's very extremely simple just to get those little tiny shapes. That's all we want. So we're going to go with strong, and I'm going to set the color to black. We want our stitching to be black. So now what we're going to do is we've got our shape layer selected, OK? And we're going to hover around the path here. Well, let's see if we can get the path selected. There we go. Deselect the shape layer, then reselect it so we can see our path show up. And when you hover over the path with the text tool, you get the type on a path text tool cursor that appears. Click that, and we just want to place a bunch of hyphens, the minus, uh, the dash. That's what we want to place all the way around this. So just go ahead and start applying dashes until you get a full ring of dashes all the way around this. 
There we go. And just throw a couple extra in just for good measure. Go ahead and commit those changes. Hit the little check icon. Make sure you've got a good ring of dashes. If it doesn't seem to line up exactly around uh, this, or this base fabric circle icon layer shape, uh, just don't worry about it. We're going to do some resizing right now. So what you want to do is go Edit, Transform, Scale. And what I've found is when we base it on the size of the icon, something like scaling this down to 80% is pretty good. So I'm just going to set the width here to 80 and the height, double click in there, to 80 as well. Hit, uh, hit the little check icon to commit the changes. And you can see we've got a nice ring of stitching now. I'm going to zoom in a couple more. We've got this nice ring of stitching going around uh, sort of on the inside of our little icon here. Now what we need to do is apply a couple little effects, well just one little effect that has a little drop shadow to the stitching to really push it over the top and make it look realistic. So let's zoom back out to 100% so we see sort of real time what's happening. And we're going to go layer, layer style, drop shadow. Now normally again, when you think drop shadow, you think shadow and shadows are typically dark. We want a light shadow. So I'm going to set the blend mode to normal and I'm going to set the color to white. and what I'm going to do is uncheck Use Global Light. We're going to set the angle to 90 degrees. Now I'm going to set the distance to 1, and I'm going to set the size to 0. So we're just getting a very sharp highlight beneath our stitching. It's really going to add more of an embossed effect to our stitching. That's cool. We're going to reduce the opacity of this shadow to 35%. All right, so it barely becomes visible. Don't worry. We're also going to come up here to Blending Options, right up here, and we're going to reduce the fill opacity of this uh, this entire layer, which is really not going to reduce the opacity of the shadow, but rather just the type, just the pixels uh, or the text in this layer. We're going to reduce that to, let's try 35%, something like that. That actually looks pretty good. Maybe we can go up to 40, but just something to give a nice subtle ring of stitching around our icon that we just created. So there you go. We've created the base of this icon. That's essentially it. What we need to do now is simply drop in the social icon. So I'm going to turn on the social icons I've got here. I'm going to grab the Twitter icon, drag it up here. And with my move tool, shut off the other icons so they don't distract us. Just drag it right down here and place it in the middle of my button. So that's great. We've created our first icon now. What if you want to create two more of these, or 20 more of these, or 100 more of these? Well, it's really a piece of cake. Here's all you have to do. Select the shape layer and the text layer, and you can either drag it right to the new layer icon, you can go layer, duplicate layers, and just hit OK. And there we go, we've created a second icon. Now, with the move tool, I'm, I still have those two layers selected here in the layers panel. Hold down my shift key and just drag it straight to the left. You can see we've created one more icon. And you, now I'm going to show you another hotkey. Hold down your alt or option key. And I'm clicking on the actual icon here. I'm just going to drag it straight to the right. Well, I'm holding my shift key again to keep it in a straight line. And we've just duplicated those two layers again. So we've got this one here, which let's rename the shape layer Facebook because that's going to be our Facebook icon. And this one over here, G plus for Google plus. So let's color the Facebook icon. That's going to be a piece of cake. Double click on the shape layer thumbnail and click on our Facebook color, which is 685F9D. There we go. You can see we've colored the Facebook icon. Great. Let's color the G plus icon. Double click on that thumbnail. Select that sort of burnt orange, which is C04737. Hit OK. We've got our three icons there. Now let's bring up our uh, actual little logos and let's drag them out of hiding down here and bring them up to the top where they'll all sort of be organized together. Let's grab the Facebook logo first and drag it into its icon and use your arrow keys to just center it up just perfectly. There we go and grab the G plus icon. We're going to drag that right over and place it right in the middle of its icon. So there you go. Just like that, we've created these social media icons. Now, I do just have a little drop shadow thrown underneath all of these icons, which is something simple. 20% 20, 20 opacity, just a distance of one and a size of two. Piece of cake. You can just do something that looks good. You can leave the drop shadow out entirely if you like. So that's it. That's how you can quickly create these social media icons, these hand-stitched social media icons. So that's it for this one. I hope you learned a thing or two. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you go check out the site. That's www.tutvid.com for more great free video tutorials. Thanks for watching.